In a survival situation, when things go horribly wrong, it's not just physical skills and preparation that matter. How people react emotionally and mentally can make all the difference. Everyone handles extreme stress differently, and personality traits can play a big role in determining who thrives and who's going to struggle. Some personalities are better suited for high-stress situations, while others may need to overcome certain traits to stay alive. So we're going to take a look at several common personality types and how they might fare when SHTF. Understanding the strengths and weaknesses of each can help you not only understand yourself better, but also figure out how to work with others in a crisis. The leader. Strengths. Leaders are natural decision makers. They stay calm under pressure, and they're quick to take charge when things get chaotic. In survival situations, they're great at organizing people, assigning tasks, and keeping everyone focused on the goal. Leaders tend to see the big picture, and they can keep a group moving forward. Their weaknesses? The downside is that leaders can sometimes be too controlling. They may struggle to listen to others or accept advice, which can lead to tension in a group. In survival, where everyone's input might be important, a leader's unwillingness to bend can create conflict. Survive or not. Leaders thrive when they can keep their control balanced with openness to others' ideas. If they can't adjust, they might struggle to keep the group united. The thinker. Strengths. Thinkers are the planners and the problem solvers. They're great at analyzing situations and figuring out the best way to tackle a problem. In survival, thinkers are the ones who will quickly devise systems for rationing food or setting up a safe shelter. Their ability to stay calm and think things through makes them valuable in emergencies. Weaknesses, however, thinkers sometimes overthink. They can get stuck weighing their options and end up delaying action, which can be dangerous when quick decisions are needed. If they don't act in time, it could cost them and others around them. To survive or not, thinkers do well in situations where there's time to plan. They might struggle when fast action is required, and overthinking can become a problem. The helper. Helpers are the caring, supportive types. They're always looking out for others and trying to keep morale high. In a survival scenario, helpers are the ones making sure everyone has what they need and offering emotional support. They bring a sense of unity and compassion, which can be critical in keeping a group together during hard times. The downside for helpers is that they often put others first to the point of neglecting their own needs. This can wear them out physically and emotionally. They may also take unnecessary risks to help someone else, which could backfire. Helpers thrive when they're part of a team, offering emotional and practical support. But they might struggle if they don't take care of themselves or try to help too much without caution. The Lone Wolf Lone wolves are independent and self-sufficient. We've talked about them before. They don't need a group to survive, and they're often highly skilled in survival techniques. When trust is an issue, or when group dynamics get messy, the lone wolf has the advantage of relying only on themselves. But going it alone can be risky in long-term survival. Lone wolves miss out on the benefits of shared resources and protection. Plus, isolation can make things harder when survival requires teamwork or when physical strength becomes a factor. Lone wolves do well in short-term or isolated scenarios, but they might struggle with the demands of long-term survival, where working with others becomes necessary. The Optimist Optimists bring hope to any situation. They always look for the silver lining, which can be a powerful tool in keeping a group's morale up. Even in the darkest times, optimists help others believe things will get better, making it easier to avoid panic and despair. However, optimists can sometimes be too hopeful, ignoring real dangers or under, underestimating them. Their refusal to accept harsh realities might lead to poor decision-making. In survival situations, blind optimism can be just as dangerous as panic. So optimists thrive by keeping their spirits high, but they need to balance hope with practicality. If they can't face reality when it's needed, they may struggle in a prolonged crisis. 
the realist. A lot of you are realists. Realists have a practical, grounded approach to life. They see things as they are, not as they wish them to be. In survival situations, realists are quick to adapt to the new reality, and they can make hard decisions without letting emotions get in the way. They're often the steady hand that keeps things moving forward. Their weaknesses? Their practicality can sometimes come across as cold or unfeeling, even though they don't mean it that way. This can create friction with more emotional people in the group. They also might focus so much on the physical challenges of survival, they overlook the emotional needs of themselves and others. So survive or not. Realists thrive in situations where practical decisions are needed. But they're going to struggle with group dynamics if they're seen as being too blunt or unsympathetic. The pessimist. A lot of us are that too. Pessimists are often seen as negative, but their cautious approach can be valuable in survival situations. They're always prepared for the worst, and they often think ahead about what could go wrong. This means they tend to favor, or excuse me, take fewer risks and make careful, calculated decisions. Their weaknesses include a downside of bringing down group morale. Constantly focusing on what could go wrong can create a sense of hopelessness, which can lead to group tension or even panic. Their negativity might also prevent them from recognizing opportunities or staying motivated. Pessimists can thrive if they use their caution to keep the group safe without letting it consume them. But if they don't balance their outlook, they may struggle by dragging down morale and causing unnecessary fear. And the good old government believer. This personality type puts their faith in the system. They believe that, even in a large-scale SHTF event, the government is going to eventually step in and save us all. This belief can give them a sense of calm and patience, knowing that help is on the way. Their trust can keep them from panicking and making rash decisions early on. But in a real, long-term survival scenario, help from the government may never come, or at least not in time. Relying too heavily on external help can prevent someone from taking the necessary steps to secure their own safety. If they wait too long, believing that rescue is imminent, they may find themselves unprepared for a prolonged crisis. The government believer may struggle if help doesn't arrive when they expect it. They need to be prepared to act on their own and not rely solely on outside assistance. When SHTF, Everyone's Survival, depends not only on their physical preparation, but also their mindset. Different personality types offer different strengths, but they also have weaknesses that can lead to struggles in a survival situation. The key is understanding these traits in yourself and in others. Leaders, thinkers, helpers, lone wolves, optimists, realists, pessimists, and government believers all have something unique to contribute. But balancing those strengths with self-awareness and adaptability is what truly leads to survival. Knowing how each personality type responds under pressure can help you build a stronger, more effective survival strategy, whether you're working alone or as part of a team.